Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Are you looking for a budget-friendly, compact 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery? Well, this battery may be just what the doctor ordered. This is Dr. Prepare's brand new release battery. I'm gonna check it out today and see if it's any good. So if you're looking for the full test channel interview on this battery, you found the right video. Let's get right into it. Time for the capacity test on the Dock Prepare 300 amp hour mini or compact series. I charged the battery two days ago, it's been resting. The battery's still at 13.67 volts. So I'll cycle the charger one more time to make sure the battery is completely full before beginning the capacity test. All right, we didn't quite make it to 14.6 on the battery scene, 14.1 and some change. That is telling me that probably one of the cells tripped a cell over voltage and stopped charging on the pack. It shut it down, so that's why you saw the pulse up to 14.6 with no current taper. Uh, that's all that'll go into it, so now time to pull it back down and see how much capacity it delivers. So I've got the Dr. Prepare 300 amp hour battery connected to the capacity test rig. This same stuff I always use. The energy meter has been cleared out. I'm going to use a little alpha inverter to run this battery down. I'll turn on the inverter now. Now I will apply the load. I'm using a 48 volt charger this time since it's such a large battery. It can handle a higher discharge current and should not skew the capacity results at all. All right, so the charger is on charging that 48 volt battery from this battery. So the load has stabilized at around 78 amps, around 1,026 watts. And the goal for this capacity test is 3,840 watt hours. Still near the beginning of the test. I'm going to make note of the battery temperature. The battery is at 79.7 .7 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, just crossed the estimated halfway mark on the Dock Prepare 300. About to reach the rated capacity on the Dr. Prepare 300 amp hour battery. There we go. We met rated capacity on the battery. Not much left in it though. Voltage is starting to crash off pretty quick on the Dr. Prepare 300 amp hour. Just a little bit over 306 right now. So we'll see how much more it's got in it. All right, the inverter went off on low voltage. So what did we end up with? The final tally. 3,931 watt hours out of a nominally rated 3,840 watt hour battery. So that gives us about 307 amp hours. So that was 3,931 watt hours divided by a nominal 12.8 volts equals 307.10 amp hours, about 2.3% over rated capacity. I was expecting a little bit better. Most of the 300s give you a little bit bigger bonus than that. So I'm wondering what kind of cells we're using in this battery. We'll find out during the teardown. So what do you get with the battery? They give you your terminal bolts. They're brass style. They give you two protective caps right there. A extended warranty, a technical support guide, and a user manual that's fairly basic, but it covers all the operating aspects of the battery, charge and discharge curves, things like that. And as you saw in the specification guide right there, the Dr. Prepare 300 amp hour is a true form factor mini or compact. So I got a representative sample of a group 31 100 amp hour battery side by side for comparison purposes. So you can see the 300 amp hour battery is just slightly taller and slightly longer. The width is fairly close on both of them, but you're packing three times the energy right here in the 300 amp hour versus a 100 amp hour battery. And these 300 amp hour compacts are very popular nowadays and Hopefully this shows you why. And even though the outer case dimensions are fairly close between this one and a 100 amp hour battery, this one weighs some more, of course, cause you got three times the energy in here. So the cells weigh more and things like that. So this one's just a touch under 60 pounds. So you got a little more weight to it, but it's got nice rope carry handles to easily manage that. And on the top of the battery here, we have a serial number code, a QR code for customer service or any problems right there. Just contact the manufacturer. And on the front of the battery, we have a nice black decal right here to match their black and red color scheme. And it gives you all your specifications listed right here on the front. Nothing on that side, nothing on that side, and nothing on the back. 
Now time for the teardown portion of the video. So I'm gonna take the lid off of this dark repair or attempt to take the lid off. I'm gonna check the cells, the wiring, the BMS, safeties, and all that good stuff. As always, I saved the last little bit of glue for you on the lid so we can look at it at the same time together. Here we go. And first impression on this 300 amp hour dock prepare, you may notice something right off the bat that a lot of the other 300 amp hour units do not have. Well, this one, look at the large wires. Three sets of probably number sixes. I'll let you know for sure in just a minute. But yes, yeah, so far, I think this one is the largest set of wire leads in this class of battery. Wow. Foam everywhere in the battery right off the bat. Protect everything. So I'm gonna disassemble it a little further and try to get some room where I can pull the lid off and check those terminals, make sure everything is tied over there. So I got all the foam removed so I can get a little bit of slack in this wire right here just to make sure everything's tight on these terminals. You know, there's been a plague of batteries that have loose connections. Now this one is seriously solid right there. I like to see that. Got large bolts right here. We have nice crimp lugs on this. Nice crimp lugs over here, large bolts, uh, yeah. And yes, that is three number sixes on the positive and the negative lead over there. So plenty sufficient for this battery. I'm spinning around so I can take the wire leads off to better access the pack. But let's look, we got AESC cells right there, 305 amp hour rated cells, just off the data on the code. I'll scan that in a moment too and get all the data. Yeah, no worries about loose connections in this battery. Probably the tightest ones I've seen in quite some time. So here's a cell group assembly out of the case right there. You can see they got tie band compression holding these cells together. They got a metal plate on either end right there. So that's kind of holding the cell group in compression. We got some foam right here on the side to protect from the edge of the case. Then the back side right here also has some foam on it. So fairly decent overall. Pretty decent laser welds on this battery right here. And then all our balance sensing leads. I have machine screw connections. I got some seal on there where nothing will come loose. You notice when I was taking the foam off, they had all the leads right here tucked up underneath that foam so they wouldn't move. So that's okay too. And then each cell is separated by some fiber board. That's always good to see as well. So you can see all the bus bars have the expansion hump in them to allow movement with the expansion contraction cells from temperatures and things like that. A little bit off right here, regards of the center of the bus bar to the center of the terminal right here on this cell. Still making full contact with the terminal though. Just making notes of everything. And then looks like we have a NTC temperature sensor glued down right there. So there is our temperature sensor right there for our low temp charge protection, high temp protection, things like that. So it is glued down right there underneath that tape and sealant right there so there it is and then they were not quite dead center on this bus bar either on this cell i said i want to show you everything on these batteries i'm not trying to hide anything from you so you can see right there the edge of the bus bar barely catches the center of the cell right there and then you can see this side right here it's got a good bit of overhang on it i mean still full contact patch you know, don't get me wrong, it's just, you know, centered up, please. Spin you around over here to where the BMS is located on the battery. That appears to be a Sci-Hang technology board. And this is the model number of the Sci-Hang board right here. All the connections to the board are extremely tight, nothing. You know, no issues with any loose wires at all with this battery. The so side hangs are decent boards overall. They, uh, they're a little generous on their overcurrent and surge. So if you need a good hit battery, you know, a side hang is a, is a decent choice for a board. So I pulled the foam off of the heat sink on the BMS right there. It is a Mott Cell branded or Mott Cell stickered board. It's so pulling the board off of the cell group right there. You can see fairly robustly built. Got a nice thick chunk of aluminum on the bottom. Nice aluminum heat sink on the top. So it should dissipate heat very well. I don't see any bimetallic switches on this model. Some of the older boards, you know, had a bimetallic switch for a thermal overload trip. So this may have a chip on board sensor or something like that. I cannot really tell. And they've got all the FETs and everything glued down with sealant. So if I take this off, I could damage the FETs. 
So curiosity got the best of me. I was like, why do we have a Sihang model number? I'm pretty familiar with Sihang boards. I've seen them in a lot of batteries. And why do we have a Mott Cell sticker on there? So I did some digging. This is a Sihang board, Sihang number. I'll have a screenshot of it right here. So I did some more digging in Mott Cell. I never heard that name before, didn't ring a bell. So I did some research, checked some stuff out, and from what I can gather, Mott Cell is a manufacturer of white label batteries. Basically, you know, they make battery pack A, B, C, D. You pick your battery pack. Uh, you can customize it, things like that, and then you can get a custom label and stuff made for you. So basically a B2B provider for whatever brand. And uh, that's not that abnormal. Just trying to give you all the information that I can find and sharing some things. And I've seen this similar setup. Uh, if you notice some of my other videos, I've opened up brand A of battery and found battery brand B board and things like that in it. So I mean, that's not abnormal. Just trying to show you everything. So I'm okay with all that. No major issue there. It is a traceable board. You can find the actual provider of the board, things like that. So hey, that's cool. Now, what I'm not okay with is the information on these cells. Now I've got a recording of the cell and some screenshots of different cells. So I'll include them now. Here's one of the QRs I'll be referencing through my QR code scanner. We'll check the validity of this code and make sure the information is accurate. So there's your information if you want to look it up on your own as well. Now, did you notice anything odd on those QR scans that I included? Well, what stuck out to me is you know, the date code. All the lithium iron phosphate cells have a standardized date code in the way they do things to track everything. Well, the date code on these is September and October of 2023. So almost two-year-old cells. Now, I found a battery a while back that had AESC cells that were very old and aged out as well. If you've been paying attention to my previous videos, please comment on which other battery had old AESC cells. And whoever is the first one to identify it, I'll put your comment in the pinned comment section of this video. So is this a trend we may be seeing with some of these budget-friendly batteries? Or are we going to start seeing a big pile of older AESC cells coming on the market. That's something to pay attention to for future batteries. Now I'm going to do a high and low temp charge protection test. I've got the power supply charging the battery. I'm going to apply heat to this NTC sensor first. We have high temp charge protection. You'll see the current drop to zero right here on the power supplies. So I will apply heat now. All right, it works. Took about 30 seconds according to the camera viewfinder. So we'll cool it back down and see if it goes back to charging. All right, back to charging. I'm gonna apply a little heat over here to the BMS heat sink. See if we got a chip on board or some kind of temperature sensing built into the board itself. So I'll apply some heat over here. Same principle applies. We'll see if we drop out current over here. Here we go. All right, that was three and a half minutes of putting heat on the board. And I didn't get any trips off of it. Now I'll check for low temperature charging protection. I added a temperature sensor right here to the sensor for the battery so we can monitor the temperature where the unit stops charging. So if it's functional, we'll see the temperature here. We'll see the current drop to zero here. Now I'll apply the ice pack and we'll see if it's there. All right, we stopped charging right here. The little sensor on the meter is indicating 37 degrees. So the NTC off the battery probably saturated before the sensor on the meter did. So I did it again, just repositioned to make sure, see if I was getting good contact with the probe on this meter right here. So the battery went off again and I'm showing 39 right here this time. So. Could be something going on right here. It could just be slower to read on this sensor right here. But regardless, we have functioning low temperature protection and they're claiming 23 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think we're well above 23 degrees on the low temp charge protection. So warm the uh, sensor back up right here and back to charging pretty quick. So maybe they got it a little bit above 32 to be conservative. I don't know, but it is functioning. 
So I want to share my final thoughts on the Dock Repair 300 amp hour mini compact, whichever you want to call it. Um, here I am, another battery review. Here I am on the fence again. There, of course, if you watch the video, there is good and bad with this battery like so many others as of late. Now, what I can say about this battery is it is dirt cheap. I mean, it's really, really cheap. Uh, at time of filming, it's just a little bit over $300. So if you want to check the current price to see if they're holding the low price point, I'll provide a convenient link in the video description down below so you can click through and check the battery and you know see if they're holding that low price point. But in reality, for the price point of this battery, can one complain about it? You know, the price point of this battery is not much more than two 100 amp hour batteries getting 300 plus amp hours. You know, they did deliver on their claims of capacity and protections and things like that. Is the information and data I found on these sales is that a deal breaker for you or not? Or is the cheap price point just so attractive that you cannot pass it up? Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this battery. And while you're there, do you have any Dr. Prepare products? I always like hearing your real world feedback on any of these brands that I review. So if you have feedback on Dr. Prepare batteries, good or bad, drop it in the comments as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Y'all take care. Be safe. Thank you for watching. I will see you on the next one. Special thanks to Dr. Prepare for providing this battery sample for today's video so I can test and demonstrate your battery's functionality. Thank you.